Next part I'm going to make is the uh, little gas jet that goes in and screws into the lower lower body for this burner. Now this requires a six thousandths diameter hole in the middle of it uh, to create the proper size orifice uh, for, the, for the proper gas flow for this, this burner. Now try as I might, uh, I couldn't manage to drill a six thousandths diameter hole on my little lathe here. Uh, probably a number of factors where uh, I can't get anywhere near the proper spindle speed on this to drill that size of a hole. So there's another option I found on another website. You find these small, let's get a focus here, find these small watch bushings. Bought them off of a uh, watch repair website, a bag of 20 of them. And these bushings have a 1.2 millimeter outer diameter and a 6 thousandths hole in the middle. So that, that'll that work out pretty good. Now I just gotta drill about a 1.2 millimeter hole in the middle of this this jet. And then uh, with a little bit, of, little bit of Loctite, I'll set one of these watch bushings in the middle. So basically, it's just a small number two brass screw, which again, I couldn't find the hex head number two with a hole in the middle. So this screw I'm gonna make out of this 1 8 inch hex stock. The thickness of the head on this screw will make about 75 thousandths. Maybe a little less, 62,000, somewhere around there. And there will be about a 100,000 length threaded portion on here. Now I want to get this as close to, uh, close to my chuck as possible for rigidity on this such a small part. So I've, I've got my caliper set to 400,000 here. So I've got about 400,000 of stick out here. It should give me enough room to make the make the uh, make this screw this gas jet and have enough room for the parting tool to separate it off. So you'll notice my lathe runs a little quieter. Uh, I went through the gearing in the back. Uh, I found found one of the wrong one of the, one of the gears appeared to be the wrong gear, the wrong gear uh, number of teeth. So I, I put what I believe to be the proper gear in here so I can do some thing, single point uh, threading at one point. I also reset all the clearances in the gear train. And it seems to have consi uh, considerably quieted down uh, the gear train in this lathe. Now I'll turn this, I'll turn this down to the major diameter of a number two thread, 100 thousandths long. Couple tenths and thousandths larger than I would have liked, but it's close enough. So I'm going to use the die here. I'm not going to try to single point thread a, a thread this small. So in order to keep this die straight, the face of this Jacob's chuck is pretty pretty square. I'm just going to use that to hold the back of this die parallel as I thread it as I thread this. Just backing off to break the chip every now and then. Now this won't create a precise precisely square shoulder and the threads you know, the threads will have a little taper because of the lead of the die so if I had to add a little bit of a chamfer to the 
burner body. We'll, do, we'll go ahead and do that. But now that it's started straight, I'll go ahead and thread this the rest of the way just nice and easy. Little small thread on a piece of brass. So it's only a hundred thousandths long, but a number two thread is so such a small diameter, it's, it's, still, it's still longer than it is big around. So now I've got to drill a hole in the end of this. You see my center drill is way too big. I've actually ordered a number zero zero center drill. But it's still coming in the mail. They keep, keep delaying the delivery. I'm just going to do a little uh, a drill point with this large relatively large center drill and then, and then drill the center of this screw out. So this is getting to be a pretty small drill bit for this lathe. The number 56 drill I believe it is. So I'm going to use this small hole drill attachment where I can actually feel, I feed it by hand here and feel what the drill bit's doing. So I want to drill at least 175 thousandths deep, if not a little deeper. So I guarantee that I'm going to zero this out with a 125 gauge block. And then I'll use a 300 thousandths gauge block. So as soon as that fits in there, I know I've exceeded 175 thousandths deep. Now, as I didn't use the proper center drill, I'm, gonna ex I'm expecting this uh, hole to be a little hard to start. Well, it didn't start as bad as I thought. <laughs> there my 300 thousandths gauge block just went in, so I know I'm at. 175 thousandths at least get the cut so you know, just a little more just to guarantee that all the way through the screw head and that's that part this off Very easy, it's such a small part of a gra this brass grass, as brass tends to do, it'll break this part right off. Should be hitting that hole pretty quick here. Like that. So I'll take that clean that little parting nub off the end of there. It should have a hole through like a deburr and glue one of those watch bushings in. So the last couple of turning operations to do is make this knurled knob which has the, the needle in it. And for adjusting the gas flow and there's this small little handle which gets soldered on here. This is just a piece of round stock with a hole in the end of it. I'll probably save you from that but let's make this piece. So this knob is made out of a piece of half inch brass. I'm going to set this 
about a half inch out from from the end of the chuck here. Should give us adequate work to accomplish what is needed. So this is going to have a kind of an abnormal thread in it. It's a number 10 thread, but it's 80 threads per inch, so it's, it's pretty fine. I definitely wouldn't want to try to single point cut down threads. I was able to locate a cap and die on eBay. Okay, so this uh, Start by start by facing this off. It's kind of an aggressive feed, but it'll work. It's going to have a whole end of it, anyways. Drawing's calling for this thread to be 156 thousandths long. So, there's quite a bit of stack to go up, come off here, so I'll get, get to it. There's there's it turned down to the major diameter. I've got a drill 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 and ream a hole in here. I'm gonna thread this first. The threading will put too much pressure on it. I'm afraid if I drill a hole first, it'll snap that end off. I'll put just the slightest chamfer on here just to Help get that taps the die started. So this will be similar to when I threaded the the jet. I've got a die here, so I'm going to use my chuck and my tailstock to to hold it square. Now this die had quite a lead on it. So I left the lead on one I left the lead on one side here, but the other side I ground it down some on the surface grinder to get rid of some of the lead. So I'm gonna start it the side that's got the lead on it and then I'm gonna flip it over to get a, a little a little more thread in it on the, this detail. Started on there pretty well now. Get all the stuff out of the way. I'm finish running this tap, this die, excuse me, I'm finish running this die up till it shoulders out. Here's the shoulder. So I'm gonna flip this around and restart it. Very carefully. Don't cross thing it. And run this face up. This face is die with less of a lead up against the shoulder.
they go very fine threaded and there okay so we're going to drill and ream this for one eighth of an inch to make sure that this is uh, reamed deep enough I'm going to go about 7 16th of an inch or so, maybe closer to a half inch deep on this drill and then the following reamer okay so that should be slightly undersized to one eighth of an inch this reamer I'll just run it into a bottom zone bottom of the hole. So um, I'll end up making the needle out of a piece of 1 8 inch by stainless and uh, putting it in here with some retaining compound. Now I've got to knurl it. See I've left it so short in here though I'm never gonna get my knurling tool onto that so now that all the precise operations are done extend that out of the chuck a little bit and put a knurl on it put a light knurl on there and then uh, then part it off So this knurl was a little light for my liking, so I went back and just put that knurling tool in there one more time and made it a little deeper. And that's a little better. So before I get going with the parting tool, now that's knurled, we'll put a little chamfer on this leading edge here. So the overall length of this part is 343 thousandths. So I'm going to start this parting tool in there. And before I get all the way through, I'm going to stop, put a little chamfer on the back side before I completely cut it off.
see by coming in there before I cut it off I was able to put a nice concentric chamfer on this back side. I'll deburr this off camera. So the next piece I've got to make goes on this knob. I need to make a threaded ring which will fit into the gas valve body. It's got the same thread on this which will allow this to thread in and out. In and out. And that'll also allow me to put an O-ring in that valve body but I'll show that more when we get when I get to it. So this is going to be just over two hundred thousandths in diameter. Start with this piece of quarter inch brass round stock. This one I'm going to set about three hundred thousandths out in the face of my chuck. I'm going to start by turning the outer diameter to size. So it's a large diameter. Then I'll turn a step in there which should be just large enough to slide into the gas valve body. And I'll drill and tap that same fine thread, super fine thread, number 1080 in the middle. Allows me to use the power feed. Check that diameter. So I might have said wrong. I, I think I said this is quarter inch stock. This is not. This is three eighths stock. I'm gonna want this to be about three hundred and twelve thousandths, just to match the uh, the body. So we're three sixty six. So I'll take a little more off. Okay, so now I need to turn a step on here at 204 thousandths diameter, 125 thousandths long. So the real test of this is it's, this is going to slide into this body here. So it's just good fit, just like it needs to be. I'm going to drill this tapping size for a number 1080. I'm going to drill and tap it about a quarter inch deep. Should give it plenty to part off. Uh, I did put a little oil on this tent off camera here. Bottom. One hundred and fifty eight thousandths wide. Let's see if we can sneak a chamfer in here. It's awful close to the awful close to the chuck. No. Nope. Clean it up a hand later. So 
I'll deburr and chamfer that off camera. But that's going to go in the end of this valve body. And it doesn't quite, it's, it's not going to quite sit all the way down the bottom. It's going to have a small gap in here to allow for an O-ring in the bottom. And also makes it easier to put threads in the, all the way through. I'm going to deburr it yet, but here's the moment of truth is if it threads onto here. Which it does quite nicely. 80 threads per inch is, gives it some fine adjustment. Okay, so here's the story so far. I've got all the turning done. And all the various pieces, and the, the body, the body, the base, all the various components of Venturi. The only detail you didn't see me make was this small detail for the flame adjuster, but that's just a piece of a 1 8 inch round stock with a hole poked in the end of it. Nothing exciting there, but that should take care of the turning work for this project. So next video, we'll start on the milling work. Uh, a number of these pieces require milling, drilling holes on them. Uh, to be more specific, um, do some indexing work. I'm going to mix some of the tubing that goes on there. But first, I think I've got to clean my bench off. Thanks. See you next time.